Welcome to the Battle of Homestead Foundation's Monday Markers program. And during this month of October, uh, in honor of Indigenous Peoples Day and Month, uh, we are going to concentrate, uh, focus on four markers that in some ways mark the history of Native peoples in our region. Today we're going to talk about the very important McKees Rocks Burial Mound, often usually called the Indian Mound, although the as we'll see, the connection with India is rather distant. Because today, October 12th, marks the date in 1492 that an Italian mariner and adventurer from Genoa, in service to the Queen and King of Spain, came upon a small island in the Bahamas, thinking that he had reached India or possibly China. Christopher Columbus has long been celebrated in American history for the discovery of the New World, despite the fact that tens of millions and perhaps as many as 100 million human beings lived in the two vast continents of the Western Hemisphere. The McKees Rocks Mound, called by white settlers the Indian Mound, because of the geographical confusion involved in the naming of these indigenous peoples by Christopher Columbus, stands as an important corrective and indicator of the ancient presence of Native Americans, indigenous people, at the forks of the Ohio. In fact, human presence in western Pennsylvania predates the arrival of European traders and soldiers at the forks of the Ohio by nearly 16,000 years, which is revealed by the extensive archaeological excavations at the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter south of Pittsburgh. While Europe had been inhabited by the so-called Homo sapiens for twice as long as the Americas, by 1492, the Americas had witnessed the flourishing of major civilizations in Mexico, Guatemala, and Peru. With the decline of feudalism and the rise of mercantile capitalism, European nations were engaged in fierce competition between Spain, Portugal, France, Holland, and England. The New World became the prize. When Columbus built the first Spanish settlement on the island indigenous people called Haiti, he brought with him guns and steel technical advances that gave Europeans an overwhelming advantage in military power. He also carried infectious diseases that decimated the native populations. While he initially praised the natives' hospitality, health, and beauty, he was intensely focused on the search for gold. Once it became clear, however, that there was no easy gold here to be had, he quickly perceived that the only profit that the nascent capitalism of Europe could make in this new world was by the taking of land and the exploitation of labor. Within a century of the Admiral's arrival in the island of Haiti, that he unilaterally named Española, the indigenous Taino people had been virtually exterminated. Over 2,000 years old, the McKees Rocks Mind is the farthest extension of the bur a burial mound, a major burial mound of the Adena Hopewell culture that spread through the upper Ohio and whose nearest major settlement was in Moundsville, West Virginia. Many smaller burial sites all over the region, especially those along the riverbanks, were destroyed by industrial expansion. The McKees Rocks Mound was 85 feet in diameter and 16 feet high. 
and sat at the eastern extremity of the rocky promontory uh, designated by natives or by observers as the written rocks because of indigenous pictograph symbols carved on its riverside face four miles downstream on the Ohio from the forks of the Ohio. The mound, only partially and poorly excavated by the Carnegie Museum in 1896, showed three levels of burials and cremation sites. The oldest single burial was of a standing male estimated to be nearly seven foot tall. Over 700 objects, including tools, arrowheads, beads, and pottery sherds were thought to be primarily from the Adena culture. The Indian mounds of the Americas tended to be collective burial mounds topped by a platform for religious ceremonies, unlike the pyramids of Egypt, which served as a repository for the pharaoh. The great Mexican pyramid at Teotihuacan is of nearly the same size at the base as the largest pyramid at Giza, but shorter, with stairs and a flat top for ceremonies. The McKees Rocks Mound was probably constructed by workers carrying earth from the fertile bottoms below the rocks in woven baskets. Visitors who climb the rocks today are confronted by a high chain link fence that bisects the promontory on behalf of riverside oil tankers and a gravel operation. However, the former site of the Indian Mound is eerily clear and covered with thick green grass. George Washington climbed the mound in 1753 as a possible alternative site to Fort Pitt, but rejected it in favor of a fort at the point. During the bloody McKees Rock strike of 1909, workers gathered on the flats below the rocks on the site of Queen Aliquippa's village to hear union organizers orate in multiple languages to the immigrant workers. The so-called Indian Mound in McKees Rocks is a place of both spiritual and political significance. It cries out for the rematriation of the bones taken from there to be returned by the Carnegie Museum in a protected and uh, respectful manner. The local community often holds a Halloween commemoration on the site of Aliquippa's village that I participated in, but sometimes it is said on the equinox and on the solstice, indigenous people's voices are heard at night on the burial mound site, singing songs of tears and memory. <laughs>